Well, I'm back out in the garage, and today I'm going to start a couple of projects. Uh, probably only get one finished, but on my Scout, I decided that I want to put fork gaiters on there, or you know, fork boots. Um, Biker's Choice, they make uh, make fork boots that will fit the Scout. They're really well made. Uh, it's a really thick kind of plasticky rubber, but uh, the cool thing is, is the bottoms have these little slits that allow the air to escape as they uh, as they kind of accordion in there and that way they don't get vacuum locked uh, around the forks and then you know the sides collapse in because of the vacuum pressure also these are um, a bit longer than the job that they have to do so I don't think I'll actually have to even tie wrap the top uh, just how thick they are should push them out against the forks but uh, let's go check out the bike so the scouts up off the ground it's nice and secure. So the first thing I got to do here is uh, I got to get the fender off and I got to take the caliper off and then I've got to take my fly screen off and uh, my new uh, Memphis Shades mount for the indicators uh, which allowed me to mount my National Cycle fly screen a little differently. And if you noticed that's an Eagle Lights um, with the halo ring. Um, so Here's a problem. If you've never taken your Scout wheel off your bike, uh, you simply undo this one pinch bolt down here, and then you, the end of the axle is actually threaded, and on the other side, the actual axle threads into the opposite side. It threads into here. The bottom of this uh, fork slider is actually threaded. So what you got to do is you undo the pinch bolt, and then this comes out. Uh, problem is, is that Unless you have a 16 mil hex driver or Allen driver, you ain't getting this out. And uh, my uh, my Motion Pro Pro tool for sport bikes and stuff doesn't fit this. So what do you do if you don't happen to have a 16 mil Allen driver? And let me tell you, you aren't going to find a 16 mil hex driver or Allen driver at the hardware store, or Sears or Harbor Freight or anywhere else because uh, they don't carry it. It's made by Motion Pro and uh, it's designed for different motorcycle axles. But check that out, it only goes down to 17 mil. And Polaris slash Indian decided that the axle on the front on that bike needs to be 16 mil. You ain't gonna find, easily, you won't find a 16 mil uh, hex driver or Allen driver uh, at any hardware store unless you happen to have a local snap-on truck that you can raid. Um, so you're pretty much left to either ordering it online or ordering it from Amazon or got a workaround. So what you gotta do is you gotta go to the hardware store and score one of these jobbies here. Uh, what this is, is this is in the hardware section. It's a, uh, it's a coupler or a coupling nut for all thread rod. And this happens to be uh, 5 8 And so if you put a 5 8 socket on the end of there, then what you've done is you've made yourself a tool to remove the axle on the scalp. 5 8 is very close to uh, 16 millimeters. As a matter of fact, there's a very little slop in that. Uh, and this thing costs like a dollar fifty versus, you know, like I don't know, depending upon where you buy your your uh, hex driver, you can spend like up to twenty bucks on that damn thing. And this will do the job, and you can still use it to torque it down because that axle's got to get torqued down uh, properly when you put the the bike back together. So in a pinch, you can use this. Uh, right now, I'm just using this temporarily. I'm going to order a sixteen mil uh, hex driver off the uh, the internet one that has the right size drive so I don't need a reducer to fit onto my torque wrench that goes up to the correct torque value. So there you go. I went ahead and bought the service manual for a scout. Already open to the section about how to remove the wheels and other than your nifty homemade tool, you know, really other than maybe you may have different accessories, uh, you'll need a six millimeter hex driver and uh, if it's on like everything on the front end here it fits the bolts that hold the fender on, it holds, uh, fits the pinch bolt for the axle, it even fits my National Cycle uh, Allen bolt. It also fits the pinch bolts at the top and the bottom of the yoke. So really I've just got, you know, these things here and I also have the, uh, the caliper. So the other thing you're going to need is an 8 mil uh, hex driver for your uh, your two caliper bolts because you got to take the caliper off obviously because you need to drop the fork out and 
I mean, we aren't draining the oil out of the forks. I'm really just doing this to put the boots on. See the amount of tools I have. Uh, there aren't that many. Got a torque wrench, which will go up to the uh, the 52 foot pounds for the the axle, and it also going to go down to 18 uh, foot pounds for the pinch bolts and all of the pinch bolts, whether they're the upper lower yokes or triple clamps or the one for the axle, same same deal. It's 18 foot pounds. Uh, I got to look up the torque spec for the caliper, and then you've got your specially made 5/8 you know, a coupler nut, you've got a 6 mil, you got the, the 8 mil, and that's pretty much it. I just got a, a bungee to help hold the caliper away while I got it off. I'm just going to loosen the Allen bolts here. And... Boy, that sucker was on there. <laughs> that's a good reason to have your bike tied down on the list. There's the one bolt out, and always make note of whether or not I see Loctite on uh, nuts and bolts. And if I don't see Loctite, that means there wasn't any from the factory. Uh, but that dude was really stuck in there. So <clears throat> when I get to take and put these guys in, I think we're going to put a little dab of Never Seize on there. Yeah, there's just enough clearance here. If you are very careful, you can get the caliper to clear the... Um, you can get the caliper to clear the wheel. Put the bungee around the uh, these uh, guide pins for the pad, and I just hung it. So I got to take and undo the lower pinch bolt. And then my nifty my nifty tool here that I just made. And the axle comes out. Of if I take this ratchet and I hold it at an angle, it's actually out uh, thread-wise. But I'm going to work it back and forth. There we go. Get that out of there. So now, take him out. So there's the axle. Now all I'm going to do, so I don't lose my spacers here, is I'm going to put the axle right back in, making sure not to let the spacer on the other side pop out. There. Easy peasy. Everything should go right back together when it came apart. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fender off and uh, it's pretty easy. Six mil driver. Take the nuts out. Carefully holding the fender with clean hands. Let that bolt drop. Don't worry about him later. Because this is the, the crucial one here. Drop the, the hex bolt, or drop the bolt and the, the hex driver all together so I can get the fender out clean without uh, causing any grief on the paint because um, it's pretty tight. Good thing is, is it's got a taper. There we go. So that's the fender out. You can see the inner brace is pretty beefy. So I'm going to go set this someplace where it won't ever get hurt my bike because I've got the this really nice national cycle fly screen here. Um, i got to take the fly screen off. <coughs> so um, it's the same size. It's the 6 mil uh, uh, hex driver. So there we go. So the next step is easy enough. I just got to take these guys off. There we go. And that's, uh, you know, there's already rubber on the inside of there, and that's what cinches it up against the uh, fork tubes. I've only had these on here a year. If you've had yours on a lot longer, it might not be so easy to get those loose, so... <clears throat> I just work carefully not to scratch stuff, and 
hopefully it all works out in the end. So the upper bolt on this is nicely finished. So I don't want to mess it up. Get this bolt out. This is a bolt provided by Memphis Shades and it's nicely finished black. It's also longer than the original bolt. So I want to get it out and these spacers. There you go. See? It's a really cool setup. I'll just let that wire hang. Now I can access the lower bolt. So undo this lower bolt. These only good at 18 foot pounds, so they shouldn't be killed from the factory either. They followed their own torque specs in the manual, that is. <laughs> that brake hose is just held to that little rubber uh, grommet wire jobby. Um, you can push it out of your way with your thumb like I just did. Now, I have a tendency to examine these, and it looks like that has a little bit of never seize on the end. So I'm going to put those back in with never seize also. The other thing to take note of is how much of this cap is sticking up above the top of the upper yoke mount, because this is my last bolt here. And it's not much, it's basically the cap itself. But it's the cap's not down below the top of the upper triple. Alrighty, moment of truth here. This whole... There it goes. So now if your forks are filthy, you obviously need to clean them before you drop this out. Or else you're just going to scratch the crap out of the tubes. And just work... work carefully. And I'm using both hands here. I'm not going to let go of this thing. She is fighting me a little bit at the bottom. There we go. There we are. One fork just taken out of the bike. So while this guy is off and before I put it back on, I'm going to take the time to wipe out the inside of the clamps on the triple and clean this. Uh, polish it up real good so it all goes back together nice. Alrighty. I've cleaned up my fork leg here and uh, polished up the fork tube itself. So now <laughs> the easiest part is uh, to make sure the numbers are facing backwards. This guy should just slide all the way down on there. I noticed that this is actually made really well and doesn't quite want to slide down there very easily. Uh, because the top, top has a nice, nice fit to it. So I'm going to lube it up with some Windex and I'll wipe it out later just so it'll slip down on there. And I don't have to fight it. Should make it just like that. <laughs> Get my seam pointed the right way. And that's it. So reassembly. I cleaned all this out and uh, just uh, making sure that my seam here is where I want it and that the part number is at the back. And I'm going to very gently push this guy back up. It should just easily slide up there. And uh, I'm going to pull this and <clears throat> I'm doing one side at a time so I can see how each side is done up. So I'm, I'm looking at the other side top cap to get the exact amount that this one has to be above. I'm going to start doing this bolt up. Now I'm not torquing this down, not even close. I just need to hold 
There we go. And now that that holds that in place, I can start putting the other bolts in. But I need to put some never seize on these guys. A little bit of anti seize on there, because that's what it looks like was on there previously. Not a ton, just a little bit. And then we will put the lower one back in. After I pull this guy out of my way, get him back in. If you're careful and you do one side at a time, you should only have to check your fork alignment. If they're out of alignment, uh, you, I highly suggest you read the manual on how to, to realign them. There's some uh, YouTube videos out there that talk about how to do it. I'm not going to show you because if you don't do it right, I'm not going to be responsible for you having an accident. Like I said, I just do this to take you along for the ride. It's not really a DIY video. There are other guys out there who do a far better job than I do. I'll put my, my nifty Memphis Shade um, light back on here. Alright, we'll tighten that up in a minute. So, that's that side. Now, I, these still have to be torqued up. Uh, they get torqued to 18 foot-pounds. And uh, I'm going to do that here next. Uh, like I said, I'm going to check the alignment. And quite honestly, if you do one side first and then the other one, the alignment shouldn't change. But if it does, you'll just have to go through a process of realigning your uh, your triple clamps, or your fork, fork yokes, however you want to call them. It's not a big deal. It's not that difficult. And once I snugged up the bottom ones, I went ahead and put some anti-seize, never seize, copper slip if you got it. Um, compound up there too, mainly because it's a steel bolt going into an aluminum thread and I don't want it to galvanically corrode and freeze up. So, tighten this guy up. Now only this top one I'm going to do up to 18 foot-pounds for now because af after I check my fork alignment uh, everything looks good then the bottom two yoke clamps or bottom two triple clamps I'll go ahead and do up to 18 foot-pounds. Yeah, so that's it. 18 foot-pounds is not a lot. That is job done for that side. Now all I gotta do is repeat. Uh, this does slide down on top of uh, the fork slider pretty well. And the, the little slits that are in the bottom that I showed you earlier allows the air to escape. And any moisture that's built up in there. And yes, I did wipe out the Windex that's on the, that was on the inside. That's it. Um, so let me get the other side done, and then we'll show you what it looks like all put back together. From this point on, it's pretty much the reverse of uh, how it came apart to put it all back together. And, you know, it's just going through and taking your time. Um, I don't have a Torx spec for these fender bolts. I could not find it in the, uh, in the Indian manual for the scalp. Uh, since everything else that uses that same size fastener on these forks, including all the pinch board, uh, bolts uh, is uh, 18, uh, what is it? 18 foot pounds, which isn't a lot. I'm going to do these the same way and uh, should all go back together swimmingly. Guide my fender in very carefully. Now, this fender um, is not exceptionally thick, and the interior brace isn't exceptionally uh, thick either, and it doesn't, it doesn't arch, but to some degree, the fender does help stabilize the forks, so while it doesn't say it in the manual, all I'm doing is getting these bolts close to being tight, but not all the way, a little bit of free play in them, so I can put the, the wheel on, get it torqued up, pinch bolt set, and then I'll tighten down the fender bolts. Okay, so this is all 
pretty much the reverse order of how it all came off. So I'll just put it on back this back together the same way. Put my feet under it to hold up the tire. The spacers are pretty much caught by the the grease seals there. So take my five eighths nut there and uh, use it to help start the threads because remember the um, the opposite side not this side but the other side is threaded into the into the uh, the fork slider there now the procedure here is you bolt this down the axle gets torqued all the way down to its final torque setting and then you torque down the pinch bolt. <clears throat> and it's very simple. The axle goes in there against all the spacers and provides uh, the correct amount of load for the spacers. It's really a nifty design other than having to have the 16 mil or 5 8 uh, socket because uh, it can only go in one way. And this guy has to go to 52 foot-pounds. <clears throat> so, that's pretty good as far as how tight it is. <clears throat> now, I'll torque it. And I'll double check this torque when it's on the ground, too. Support my ratchet from underneath. There we go. Two clicks. This lower bolt here, it gets 18 foot pounds like everything else. But because this is going into aluminum and it's a steel bolt, just like all the other ones, I'm going to dab a tiny bit of anti seize, some good old never seize, and wipe off the excess. So remember, the, the through bolt, the axle, is the bolt that draws the, the fork legs together and stacks all the spacers on top of each other. This is torqued to 52 foot-pounds, and then you set the torque on the pinch bolt. And that's it. There's only one pinch bolt on the scout. <coughs> and uh, so it's pretty easy to do this, but you really do need to get a, a torque wrench. Two clicks. That's it. She's dunsies. So that's my front wheel back on here. Time to cinch up these bolts. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use the same 18 foot pounds. Seems like a good setting. There we go. Move it up in position. Start these guys by hand to make sure they're going in clean. Alright. 35 foot pounds. Snug it up with a ratchet and then send it home with the torque wrench. I'm going to do a little bit on each bolt so they kind of get clamped evenly. You can see why you need to have your bike strapped down to your stand because you do move it a little bit when you're doing the work on it. There we go. So that is now torqued down. So it's 35 on these. In this job you've got three torque settings. You've got 35 foot-pounds for the caliper mounting bolts. You've got 18 foot-pounds for every single pinch bolt. And then you've got uh, 52 foot-pounds for the front axle bolt. So that's it. That's just the three. But you do need to torque these things down. And uh, <laughs> I, uh, I bought this service manual. It's the actual Indian shop manual online. And I don't remember the website. Uh, it was a while ago. The, um, 
I don't think I paid more than like 60, 70 bucks with delivery for it. So Google it and then buy a shop manual. It's worth the money and then you have all these specifications and procedures so you don't have to trust a, a dude like me on the internet showing you how to do this stuff. Mainly, I just put these videos together so you can see it being done. Not that you take it, you know, my word that this is all the steps that you need to do. Because I'm not a professional mechanic. I'm just handy and I work on my own stuff. So, you know, it saves me money and I make mistakes, so don't take my word on it. You know, do your own research, make sure you got all the stuff that you need to do the job right and safe. So, speaking of which, let's finish this up. So the star washer gets slipped in here. And be careful so I don't scratch up chrome. And I just gotta check my tilt, make sure it's back where I had it. so far that it's touching the headlight and if the brackets are off you know you can make this thing sit all crooked so I just kind of tighten one side a little bit at a time or each side a little bit at a time so I'm happy with where it's sitting I am going to use Indians uh, torque setting for all the other pinch bolts I set these to 18 foot-pounds because, like I said, National Cycle doesn't really give you any. And it's a steel bolt going into a steel thread, so 18 foot-pounds should be more than enough to hold that windshield in place. And it's bearing against a big old star washer, too. That is it. Get this guy off the lift. Check in my front tire, make sure everything's good with the brakes. That's it. Um, last thing I'm going to do is go through and look at all the all the fasteners to make sure I've got everything cinched up, torqued up, everything the way it's supposed to be. Push this guy out. All right. Get that up. Lock that in place. Get ready to hold on to the bike as I slowly let the lift down. Took me a while to figure out exactly the sweet spot, the center of the lift here. Slide this out with my foot. Roll the scalp back. Get my stand down. Back on the side stand. Sweet! All back together, back on the ground. I don't know, man. I think those uh, fork boots should be factory. That looks cool. I'll go over a video in the future about some of the stuff I put on that I didn't really record any video on. Uh, but that was something I thought would be interesting uh, by most people. Would uh, consider that to be something they'd want to see. So I figured, screw it. I'm going to do the work. Might as well make a video of it. But that definitely helps beef up the front of the Scout and uh, I like it. It's a good look. So that's it for now. Um, got the bike back together. Uh, for today I was only doing the fork boots and really I mean if I didn't record that it would probably only be about just under two hours of work. Most of that is just looking up torque values and the manual and making sure you know you're taking your time and not scratching anything up. The bike looks you know Vintage and modern at the same time, you know. Well, duh, Mike. Of course it does. <laughs> it's it's a cruiser designed, you know, classic styling. But uh, I like to think that I've created mine uh, in a style that's a little bit more unique. Got uh, Melly's bike there. That's her Speedmaster. I'm gonna do a catch-up video on that too with Melly. Uh, kind of go everything we did on it. And, you can see how wonderful that custom seat looks like. But, uh, lots of work done on, on Sully there. And Barney is not forgotten. Got big plans for Barney. Already saw the fuel tank, but uh, changes are coming. So that's it for now. Uh, I've got a few more parts that I haven't got for the Scout. Uh, nothing too dramatic. I'm going to put a swing arm bag on the Scout uh, from Willie and Max, but I've got a fab up. Uh, 
a bracket to mount it to the swing arm and I also have a slotted belt guard uh, from the, the new Scout Bobber which is now an accessory item. You can go straight to your Indian dealer and pick that bad boy up. Uh, you don't have to special order it uh, by part number. It should be an accessory item. Uh, it's the same price as the chrome cover. Uh, it's just powder coated black and it's got, you know, kind of like go fast uh, slotted holes kind of punched out in it. But it looks cool and I need it because on the 60s belt guards plastic and that's going to be a no-no for getting a good solid mount on my swing arm bag. But that's another video. Like I said, I got to noodle out how I'm going to mount it first and then get the, the parts. Um, basically bolts, nuts, that kind of thing, and some way to mount it solidly so it doesn't move around. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Uh, it's always appreciated if you click like and subscribe and all that good jazz. Hit the little bell notification so that you know when we put up new videos, even though they haven't come out on a regular basis. Uh, I'm going to try and do some more on a semi-regular basis. I don't do this professionally. I just do it for fun, so I take everyone along for a ride. And uh, Melly will be out in some additional videos also. Got some more work to do on the other bikes. And until I see everyone again, everybody ride safe.